Come and see what the Lord has done for me. Come and see oh, what the Lord has done for me. Come and see what the Lord has done for me. If you were to be mine, I would really be. Come and see, come and see oh, what the Lord has done for me. Come and see hey, what the Lord has done for me. Come and see you. Oh, what the Lord has done for me. If it were to be mine, I would really be. If it were to be mine, I would really be. If it were to be mine, I would really be. If it were to be mine, I would really be. If it were to be mine, I would really be. Come and see, come and see you. What the Lord has done for me. Come and see oh, what the Lord has done for me. Come and see what the Lord has done for me. If it were to be mine, I would really be. If it were to be mine, I would really be. If it were to be mine, I would really be. If it were to be mine, I would really be. If it were to be mine, I would really be. If it were to be mine, we would really pay. If it were to be mine, we would really pay. If it were to be mine, we would really pay. If it were to be mine, we would really pay. Come and see you, what the Lord has done for me. Come and see you, what the Lord has done for me. Come and see you, what the Lord has done for me. If it were to be mine, I would really be. If it were to be mine, we would really, we would really pay. If it were to be mine, we would really, we would really pay. If it were to be mine, we would really pay. If it were to be mine, we would really pay. If it were to be mine, we would, we would really pay. If it were to be mine, we would really, we would really pay. If it were to be mine, we would really pay. If it were to be mine, we would really pay. Greetings, everybody. Greetings, greetings, greetings. Hope you're all doing good. Happy Sunday to everyone. It's the day the Lord has made. We rejoice and be glad in it. Today is another beautiful day and we're on here with a chapter a day. A chapter a day today is taken from the book of Isaiah chapter 33 and it has 24 verses. Isaiah chapter 33 has 24 verses. Happy Sunday to everyone. Greetings Mom Nicolene Tan. Greetings Uncle Paul Chris Damila. Greetings, greetings, greetings. Hope everyone is doing great. Hope everybody is doing amazing. God has been faithful. God has been awesome, keeping us, holding us on, and helping us kill through such tough and challenging times. But He's been there with us all through. And He promises to be with us till the end. He's not planning to leave us nor forsake us. He's a God who cannot change but can change things. And we know that His promise to be with us always will never fail or will never change. So, on a chapter a day, we get to know who we are in Christ, the power we possess, the things we can and cannot do, we should or should not do, so that we can live a successful Christian life here on earth and end up spending eternity with God in heaven. Heaven in view, that's the whole idea. Of course, yes. We are totally and completely excited to be here to do that which God has assigned us to do, to get on with that which God wants us to get on with. And that's why we're on here today. While we're at it, we're creating a King James Version audio Bible. And then we're also studying the Word of God together. You know, daily as I go on, I get to learn a lot of things. And continuously, I get really honored. I get to feel really blessed, you know, to have been... To have been assigned to do this kind of work like considering the fact that we're in the last days and you just can't do without the word of god you can scale through some situations or circumstances without the word of god 
I feel really honored and super blessed that God gave me an opportunity to be able to create an audio Bible. And today in church, our pastor was saying something that was very intriguing. And it's what I'd always noticed because sometimes I kind of feel guilty that I read a scripture for a particular day. I went through it. I actually, I felt like I studied that scripture, but for some weird reason, whatever the reason is, I seem not to be able to remember. Like if you ask me after some hours, I seem not to be able to remember. And I will beat myself up for it and over and over. And he was like, don't beat yourself up. That's another kind of technique or way that the enemy uses to discourage you. Okay, so let me better not read because I'm reading and I'm not understanding. No, just keep reading. The day or the moment where you need that word. And that has happened to me before so I could understand perfectly. I could relate. And when the word will be needed, the day or the time or the moment, I kid you not, the spirit of God is going to bring it to your remembrance. You'll be in shock. Like I, there was a scripture. There was something that the Holy Spirit made me remember at some point that I needed it. And I didn't even know it was scripture. I just thought maybe it was like a, you know how these proverbs are, you know, these wise sayings and stuff like that. I thought it was one of those wise sayings, you know, kind of thing. I didn't even know it was the word of God. You can imagine. It was something I'd read, I'd read in the Bible, but as at the time I read it, it made no sense. I probably didn't even understand it. That's why it didn't even feel like I'd ever read it before. But as at that time... When I needed that word for whatever the circumstance was that I was going through, whatever the situation that I was going through, the Holy Spirit so brought it to my remembrance. It was so clear. It's, it's like I had no need for forever. But I kid you not, when I read it, I didn't understand it. It made no sense to me. And if I only focused on the fact that it made no sense to me, I'll probably not be reading the word of God anymore. Because there are lots and lots of times that you read the word of God, you read a particular scripture or something, it won't make any freaking sense to you. But believe me, just keep reading. Do not let the enemy deceive you. Do not let the enemy make you let go of your blessings. Just keep reading. Whether you understand it or not, keep at it one day. Just one day, at the appointed time, you'll be in awe of what God will do. You'll be in total awe of what God can do. So guys, let's get on. We'll start with a word of prayer. Welcome, Mom Kalelum. Thank you, thank you, thank you for coming. Amazing woman. Thank you, thank you so much for being here. So let's pray. Father, we thank you for this day that you've made. Rejoice and be glad in it. We thank you for your faithfulness, your loving kindness, your tender mercies. We thank you for all that you've done, you're doing, and you're still to do. Because in everything, you work for good to them that love and serve you and are called according to your purpose. Lord, we pray, O oh God, that you're going to speak to your people today in a very special way. Increase while we decrease, so it's going to be you and you alone that will be seen, felt, heard, and experienced throughout this edition of the chapter a day. Father, we pray, O oh God, that the expectations of the righteous will not be cut short. Wherever your children are gathered today all over the world, O oh God, who are about to listen to your word and they're receptive, they have a, an open heart to receive from you, O oh God. Father, I pray that you're going to allow them to experience your power, your presence, and your blessings, O oh God. You're going to help them to be totally and completely free. And Lord, you make them understand that having Christ in their lives is the best thing that would ever happen to them. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Take all the glory. Lord, we pray, O oh God, that you're going to cause us to increase. You would cause us to decrease and only Christ alone would increase. Let it be you and you alone that will be seen, felt, heard, and experienced. Thank you, Lord God, because we know you always hear and answer. You deserve all the praise. For in Jesus' name we pray. And all the saints shall say a ginormous 
amen amen and amen guys like i said if you're just tuning in we are on a chapter a day on here we get to know who we are in christ the power we possess the things we can and cannot do so that we can live a successful christian life here on earth and end up spending eternity with god in heaven heaven in view that's the whole idea and while we're at it we create a king james version audio bible and then we study the word of god together if you would scale through if you would succeed in this last days if you'll be able to find your feet if you'll be able to hold your crown so that nobody takes it away from you child of god there is no way you're going to do that without studying the word of god there's no way you're going to do that without praying there's no way you're going to do that without communicating without communing with the holy spirit there's just no way you won't be able to get through it you need the holy spirit you need to study the word you need to pray you need all these things so let's get the birthday party started today the first person on our birthday book is mom rosemary mom rosemary i got to know her when i was in ghana we went to the same church together she was one of those persons who called me from the start you know how sometimes when you go to church like first timers they take your numbers and stuff like that basically it was in ghana that they do some things with those numbers that was the first place that I realized that they do something with those numbers. And funny enough, they called me. They didn't call me and start talking church, like straightforward. No, they called me and asked, how am I? How long have I been in Ghana? You know, what did I come to do and stuff? like. It was so welcoming. I was surprised. And then on Wednesday, they didn't call me for Bible studies. They called me and asked and asked if I have a place where I fellowship and stuff like that. And then I told them. And then I think it was on Friday that they called me and, and then they gave me a rundown of their activities in church. And then they say, if I'd love to come, they'll be glad to have me and all that. You know, like it was so, it was so different. It was so unique. And I really loved it. It was my Rosemary who called me the first time. She had this very soothing, very calming and very, I mean, friendly voice and tone and everything i just had to connect with her and she's an amazing person very amazing person the next person is mr allen mr allen is the son of my very very good friend and prayer partner minister mark allen actually the way he always relates with his mom you just be like okay this is mommy's bodyguard like this is mommy's personal person don't even dare this one oh my god it's so it's so beautiful it's a hard-working very smart and intelligent young man and he's the one who loves to do things and make sure that the mom is okay you know he's the one who gets to figure out when his mom is okay or not he's the one who gets to find out i want to know what's going on with mommy and all it's really cool you know it's like there are some people that they were born and they just automatically took the res took up the responsibility like they understood their responsibilities as first children more so first sons it's like you're the one who's supposed to take care of the family like the first boy it feels like that's just your responsibility and some people just grow up taking up that responsibility so naturally that's what alan does happy birthday to you my darling grow and increase in faith and in wisdom and in stature the last but not the least on our birthday book today is hans henry jr hans Henry Jr. is actually my little nephew. The man is so chubby and so bulky. He's like, they say he normally does exercise. <laughs> He's one year old today. He is so, so handsome. A little handsome prince he is. And he loves to pull his sister and stuff. You need to... <laughs> He's just one year old and he's already struggling with all his might and strength and vigor to want to talk. Young man, you're going to stand out and amongst your peers, you're always going to be the best because God is going to get you like to that level, that high, high level. That's where God is going to get you. You're going to shine. You're going to soar. You're going to stand out in Jesus name. Very handsome little prince. Happy birthday to you. Auntie loves you very, very, very much. Keep soaring, keep shining, and God bless you. 
So let's take it again. Happy birthday, Mom Rosemary. Happy birthday, Mr. Allen. And a very special happy birthday to you, Baby Hans Henry Jr. Let's go, people. We we'll pray for the birthday people and then we we'll start the birthday party. Like I told you, our Bible party for today is taken from the book of Isaiah, chapter 33, and it has 24 verses. Get yourself ready. If you've read already, get prepared. We're coming, we're coming soon so you can bless us as well. And also will be a blessing to you in our own little way as God would have it. If you didn't read, don't freak out. When we're creating the audio Bible, which is when we're reading the chapter together, you can open your Bible and we'll read together, okay? Before we start talking, before we start having a conversation around that particular scripture, we can actually study together. Welcome, Mam Engwa Mai. Glad to have you. So, like I always say, we're not just praying only for these three people that have read their names out and called their names and did shout outs for them. We're praying for every single person who is born today. So, if you know someone who knows someone who knows someone who knows someone who is born today, please forward this to them so that they can receive the prayers and get blessed by it. They can hold on to the prayers and believe, and God will do that which we're decreeing and declaring upon their lives in the lives of these ones who listen so let's pray father we thank you for adding a new year to the lives of all these amazing people oh god we thank you for causing them to stand out and not fit in lord as they're fulfilling purpose and doing that which you created them to do oh lord they might get to that place where they feel overwhelmed they feel like they want to give up or back out lord i pray that when they get there they'll hear a clean loud clear voice that's going to say this is the way walk thou in it do not derail do not stray they'll stay on course and after it all of glory be given unto your holy name Lord, I pray you cause them to increase in wisdom and stature, gaining favor before God and before men. Let their gifts make a way for them, causing them to stand before kings, not before mean men. Lord, cause them to increase on every side. Let your word be a lamb unto their feet and a light to their part. Lord, I pray, O oh God, Father, that your word is going to cause their part to keep shining brighter and brighter unto the perfect day. Lord, I pray, O oh God, that you're going to lead them. You're going to guide them, O oh God. Father, show them the way. Lord, we are grateful. Lord, your word says, Let us come and reason together. Even though our sins be as scarlet, you make them as snow. As green, you make them as wool. Lord, let that be a practical reality in the lives of these ones who were born today, O oh God. Father, I pray, O oh God, that you're going to cause them to stand out and not feel in, O oh Lord. Father, I pray that you write beautiful stories on the pages of their lives, even as you open it today in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, whatever they do, O oh God, let it be a blessing in the lives of all those who are connected to them, O oh God. Father, I pray, O oh God, that you perfect all that concerns them. Give them a Psalm 226 state, a state of continuous laughter, singing, celebration, jubilation. And if you try to come, they'll be here same time next year. Testifying of all the awesome things you've done in our lives and what you're yet to do. Lord, I pray, O oh God, that you cause them to stand out. That they'll not only be they'll not only not, not only will their gifts make a way for them before kings, not only before mean men, it would also cause some of them to be kings and queens themselves. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Lord, perfect all that concerns them. Open their eyes to see those that are supposed to be destined to help us too. And technically, O oh Lord, I pray, O oh God, that you're going to cause these people to stand and strategically position themselves to help these people when the time is right. As much as that, Lord, you're also going to strategically position their destiny helpers all around them to help them when the time is right. Father, I pray, O oh God, that you take all the glory, take all the honor because you deserve it. Lord, divinely connect them to people and things that will cause them to be their best. And divinely disconnect them from people and things that will cause them to stagnate or retrogress in the mighty name of Jesus. Let them be the ones manifesting to the growing nation of the sons of God. Thank you, King of Glory. Thank you, Abba Father. Because we know that you always hear an answer. You deserve all our praise. You are worthy of it all, O oh Father. Father, I pray. That any tongue that rises against them in judgment, you shall condemn, O Lord. Open the windows of heaven and pour out the treasures of your blessings upon their lives. 
Lord, let money meet money in their pockets. Blessings meet blessings in their lives. Favor meets favor in their lives. Even as you clothe them with a garment of praise, honor, and favor in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, cause them to be trailblazers, space setters, and world changers in the mighty name of Jesus. Give them all that it takes to be able to go and conquer their world in Jesus' name. Thank you, Abba Father. Lord, cause these ones to be a blessing in their generation and beyond. Lord, do for them that which no man can do. We bless your holy name, O God. We magnify you. We salute your majesty. We give you all the praise, all the honor and adoration. Because you deserve it. You are God all by yourself. Lord, we pray, O God, that you teach these ones to not only get to the top, but get to the top and stay there permanently. Thank you, Lord God. Let this birthday be the best birthday yet. And Lord, if you try to come, there will be here same time next day, giving testimony of all the awesome source things that you do in their lives, now and forevermore. Thank you, King of Glory. Thank you, Ancient of Days. We seal every prayer request with the blood of Jesus, because we know it is done. Thank you, Lord God, for in Jesus' mighty and blessed name, we pray with thanksgiving. And all the saints, shall say a ginormous amen amen and amen but you all know that i like to sing the amen so let's go amen 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 let it be so amen 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 in their lives amen as we have prayed amen let it be in their lives, let it be so. Amen, 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 amen. In their lives, amen. As we are afraid, amen. Let it be in their lives. Say the prayers, amen, 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 amen. With the blood of Jesus, amen. Let it be so, amen. In their lives, as we pray. God bless you all tremendously. May you feel your bands with all good things. Enlarge your coast and do for you that which no man can do but him alone. Have a blast. Happy birthday. Je vous aime, je vous aime, plus plus fort que moi. Joyeux anniversaire. God bless you all, bless you, bless you, bless you. It's time for the Bible party. Let's create the audio Bible first. Who's with me? It's always King James Version, people. I always do King James Version. So if you have your Bible with you, you can open and let's read together. Are you ready? Is your Bible there? Is it open? Okay, so let's go. Mm. Isaiah chapter 33. Woe to thee that spoilest, and thou wast not spoiled, and dealest treacherously, and they dealt not treacherously with thee. When thou shalt cease to spoil, thou shalt be spoiled, and when thou shalt make an end to deal treacherously, they shall deal treacherously with thee. O Lord, be gracious unto us. We have waited for thee. Be thou their arm every morning, a salvation also in the time of trouble. At the noise of the tumult, the people fled. At the lifting of thyself, the nations were scattered. And your spoil shall be gathered like the gathering of the caterpillar. As the running to and fro of locusts shall he run upon them. The Lord is exalted, for he dwelleth on high. He hath filled Zion with judgment and righteousness, and wisdom and knowledge shall be stability of thy times, and strength of salvation, the fear of the Lord, is his treasure. Behold, their valiant ones shall cry without, the ambassadors of peace shall weep bitterly. The highway lies waste, the wafering man sees it. He had broken the covenant. He had despised the cities. He regarded no man. The earth mourneth and languisheth. Lebanon is ashamed and hewn down. Sharon is like a wilderness. And Bashan and Camel 
shake off their fruits. Now will I rise, saith the Lord. Now will I be exalted. Now will I lift up myself. Ye shall conceive chaff. Ye shall bring forth stubble. Your breath as fire shall devour you. And the people shall be as the burning of lime, as thorns cut up shall they be burned in the fire. Hear ye that are far off what I have done, and ye that are near acknowledge my might. The sinners in Zion are afraid. Fearfulness hath surprised the hypocrites. Who amongst us shall dwell with the devouring fire? Who amongst us shall dwell with everlasting burnings? He that walketh righteously and speaketh uprightly, he that despiseth the gain of oppressions, that shaketh his hands from holding of bribes, that stoppeth his ears from hearing of blood, and shutteth his eyes from seeing evil, he will dwell on high. His place of defense will be the fortress of rocks. Bread will be given him. His water will be sure. Thine eyes shall see the king in his beauty. They shall behold the land that is very far off. Thine heart shall meditate terror. Where is the scribe? Where is the receiver? Where is he that counted the towers? Thou shalt not see a fierce people, a people of a deeper speech than thou canst perceive of a stammering tongue that thou canst not understand. Look upon Zion, the city of our solemn nights. Thine eyes shall see Jerusalem, a quiet habitation, a tabernacle that shall not be taken down. Not one of the stakes thereof shall ever be removed, neither shall any of the cords thereof be broken. But there, the glorious Lord will be unto us a place of broad rivers and streams, wherein shall go no gully with oars, neither shall gallant ships pass thereby. For the Lord is our George, the Lord is our lawgiver, the Lord is our king, he will save us. Thy tacklings are loosed, they could not well strengthen their mast. They could not spread the sail. Then is the prey of a great spoil divided. The lame take the prey. And the inhabitants shall not say, I am sick. The people shall dwell therein. Shall. And the inhabitants shall not say, I am sick. The people that dwell therein shall be forgiven their iniquity. This is the word of the Lord. And all the saints shall say a ginormous thanks be to God. Thanks be to God, everyone. So let's go. What did you learn? What did you learn? What did you learn? And yes, if you're just tuning in, this is a chapter a day. We get to know who we are in Christ. The power we possess the things we can and cannot do. So that we can live a successful Christian life here on earth. And end up spending eternity with God in heaven. Heavenly view, that's the whole idea. But yes. You can also give us what you study in your quiet time, what you studied at service today, whatever you learned that has to do with the word of God. It's always Jesus who is the center of it all. Jesus is the focus of it all. So yes, anything Jesus, we do on the chapter a day because I know someone might get in here and we're already started and we're going on and on. We're pressing on on fire and you're like, what are they talking about? Well, we're talking about Jesus. But today, specifically, we're talking Jesus through Isaiah 33. But if you have something, a message, maybe God gave you, you can request to come live or you can participate in the comment section. It's up to you. We'll be very grateful to have you either ways, whether in the comment section or coming live to come and tell us what God has for us today through you. Oh, yes, God can use each and every one of us here. To be a blessing to each and every one of us present at this life right now. Okay? What to thee that spoilest, and thou wast not spoiled, and dealest treacherously? Even in the days of David, okay, David was also bothered about the fact that these people that do treacherously, these people that 
do wrong. These people that are evil. It, they seem to be fine. They seem to be going on with their lives and just, you know, nothing is happening to them. It seems like there are no consequences for their actions. <laughs> child of God, child of God. When Ishmael was born, it looks like there are no consequences. First, Sarah started blaming Abraham for what she made to happen. She was the one who insisted and pleaded with Abraham to go into Haggai. To lie with her guy and give a child. Today we see the consequences of that Ishmael. The Ishmaelites. If you know these people. You know the wala that they bring to the world. It was like it was nothing as at that time. It didn't look like so much of a problem. Up until generations upon generations. And we're seeing the manifestation of that particular tribe. On the earth. We're seeing some of the havoc that they've done in some places. It doesn't look like it. It looks like, oh, the, 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 the wicked people are winning. It looks like, oh, they're leading. It looks like they're enjoying. They're having a great time. No, they're not. Because even David also saw it and was like, God, what's going on? And God says, ah, ah. He showed David the end of the wicked. When they say war, sometimes we expect that, oh, that war is just going to happen immediately. It's just going to happen instantly. No, darling. Sometimes it will happen instantly. Sometimes it will take years. Because God promised Abraham a promised child. It took 25 years for manifestation. That didn't mean the promise wasn't legit. So because you don't know how long yours is going to take, you just need to keep submitting. You just need to keep submitting to the will of God. You just need to keep submitting to the direction and the guidance of God. And be rest assured, someday, somehow, you'd receive that call. Someday, somehow, you receive that thing that God has purposely and specifically made for you. And you will know without any out of doubt, this can only be God. Oh yes. Oh yes. It's not today that people look at some other person and be like, God, these people that are just doing all kinds of evil in this world, them? And God says, no. There's an end for these people. And the end thereof is so dangerous. So dangerous. So much so that at that point in time, you start pitying them. You start desiring to even pray for them. You start desiring to even walk with them. That's how it is. So if you're dealing treacherously, if you're doing all kinds of wickedness, if you're planning all kinds of evil, your time is being numbered. Your reward is coming. God diligently rewards everyone. Every single person. Every time. And it says, O oh Lord, a great, uh, be gracious unto us. We have waited for thee. Be thou their arm every morning. Our salvation also in the time of trouble. Of course, we are crying out to God. We want God to save us. We want God to keep us. It's only God who can keep you perfectly. It's only him who can keep you properly. Oh, yes. That job cannot keep you. That husband or wife will not keep you. That child will not keep you. That career, that degree will not keep you. It's God himself that will keep you. It's God. Only God can keep you. Do not be deceived. It may look like somehow those things are keeping you. Those things are the ones that are making you be the person that you are. It is not. It is God that is upholding you with his righteous right hand. And if he dares remove his hand, you are done for. You are done for. Welcome, woman of God. Greetings, greetings, greetings. Mom, love, Christ team. Thank you for coming. God bless you. Oh my God, that's so amazing. Happy Sunday to you. 
what is the Lord saying to us through the word? And now we're at verse 3. It says, At the noise of the tumult, the people fled. At the lifting up of thyself, the nations were scattered. Oh my God. When we're not propagating Jesus, when we're not propagating God, we are propagating ourselves. We are propagating our activities. Hmm. The Wahala is not going to be here. It's not going to be here. And sometimes we are wondering why people are not getting saved genuinely. Why people are not coming to Christ genuinely. Because we are not preaching Christ. Some of us were not preaching ourselves. We're not preaching what we desire. We're not preaching what the people want to hear. Each year's kind of messages. And that's why people are not getting genuinely saved. That's why people are just making fun and making jest of the word of God. May the good Lord help us in Jesus name. And it says, And your spoils shall be gathered like the gathering of the caterpillar. As the running to and fro of lockers, shall he run upon them. God is going to give you your spoil in due time. Do not be afraid. Do not give up. Do not back out. God wants to do something spectacular in your life. God wants to do something marvelous in your life. And the enemy is just fighting you with all these small, small flashy things that are just mimicking what God has in store for you. And it's not even close. Even with that mimic. It's not even close to what God has in store for you. So you have to stay steadfast. You have to hang in there. Hold on and hold out. You cannot afford to give up now. Not at all. It says, um, what well, on um, verse, okay, verse five. The Lord is exalted. For he dwelleth on high. He hath filled Zion with judgment and righteousness. The finished work on, of, of, of Jesus Christ on the cross is what makes you righteous. Yes. He came and died that painful death, paid the price for you. So that when God is looking at you, he's seeing his son and the blood of his son that was shed for your sakes. And so he's seeing you through the blood of Jesus. And so he sees you as righteous. It's not because of what you're doing or not doing. It's because of your acceptance of the finished work of Jesus Christ on the cross of Calvary. That makes you a child of the Most High. That makes you a righteous person. It's not by power or might. It's not by power or might. It's by the Spirit of the Lord. It's by the power of God Almighty. Through Jesus Christ. And it says, And wisdom and knowledge shall be the stability of thy times, and strength of salvation. The fear of the Lord is his treasure. Those who fear God, they have a treasure. God keeps them. He protects them. He guides them. Wisdom and knowledge. We need wisdom and knowledge. You operate at the level of wisdom which you know. At the level of knowledge which you know. That's where you operate. You cannot operate beyond the knowledge that you have. Beyond the wisdom that you have. You cannot operate above it. You can't. And that's why studying the word of God is of the essence. Because it's in the word of God that you get to know what is happening per time. What you need to do. I remember, like I said, sometimes the Holy Spirit will tell you that this is what needs to be done now. He will tell you beforehand. Because why? You have a relationship with him. When you have a relationship with God, he tells you things beforehand. He told um, um, Abraham, he says, I cannot keep this thing from Abraham, my friend. Ah! And Abraham was able to intercede for his nephew, Lot. In fact, the city of Sodom and Gomorrah, Abraham was able to intercede for them. 
because he had a relationship with God. When you have a relationship with God, you have some things that will be told you beforehand. You'll be able to make things happen or you cancel things that you don't want to happen. When the Holy Spirit gives you a revelation, it's either for you to pray it and bring it to manifestation or you cancel it so it doesn't happen. There are things that God has shown me before time that we had to put it up in prayers and it never happened because it wasn't good and I didn't want it. So it's not like God just shows you these things just for showing sakes. No, when he shows you, you have a part to play. You have something that you have to do to make it come to pass or not to. Depending on what that um, revelation is. And so the one that had to do with um, um, Sodom and Gomorrah, Mo Abraham had to intercede so much so that that Lord was not destroyed. Lord would have been destroyed. Was he serving God? Yes. But see the place he was at. He was not even able to, to hear clearly or to know or to discern what was about to happen. Because of the environment where he found himself. That's the, that's the reason why we need to be connected to the right set of people. So that we can be able to hold on to the word of God. And study the word of God. And have a relationship with God. So that God can give us some things that we need to use to do his will here on earth. So that we will not be tossed to and fro by every wind of doctrine. We need the word of God. We need the word of God. And it says, verse 7, Behold, their valiant ones, their valiant ones shall cry without, the ambassadors of peace shall weep bitterly. Oh, Jesus wept. When he saw what was happening on the earth, when he saw what was going on in Israel, he wept. That's what we're seeing today. Are we seeing some of the things that are happening in the world? Like another human being will literally take a machete and cut another. I, I don't understand. How, how, how do people get to this place? But then, when you're studying the word, you see there that the heart of man is desperately wicked. Above all things, who can know it? So you know. That there is a possibility that that heart that has not been tamed by God, that heart that has not had an encounter with Jesus can do that kind of thing and they will not feel remorse. They will not feel any, it will be, it will be normal because it's their nature. Hey God. Oh, my dad is here. Greetings, 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 daddy. Says God bless you woman <laughs> from God. Say it as it is. We, the remnants, need this. Oh, yes, we need the word of God. We need the undiluted word of God. We need the undiluted word of God. And if you're not studying the word of God, you'll not be able to know whether what that person is saying is true or not. And that's why they'll be able to tell you that, oh, go and eat grass. And you confidently go and eat grass. Because you think that it's only that man of God that knows what God is saying. It's only that man of God that can get the revelation from God. So what, how is the eating of grass helping you to grow spiritually? How is it helping your relationship with God get stronger? Because as a child of God who has Christ dwelling on the inside of you, the Holy Spirit is leading you and guiding you. Those are the things that you need. You need the, the, the Spirit of God to be able to tell you that this is okay, this is not. To be able to help you to discern what is right, what is from God and what is not. Like the Berean Christians, you are able to go back and look into the word of God and say, God, this one that this person said, it doesn't tie with the word of God. Though. You trash it. This one that they said, it was okay. But this one, uh -uh, you trash it. Because you know why? Sometimes, even us as children of God, while we're talking, we're saying some things, there is just the energy and the vibe that is going and then you might say something that comes from you 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 me princess something that comes from my heart is not god is not connected to the bible and in that time i don't even understand that that's what i've said 
but someone who studies the word of God, someone who is intentional, someone who has a relationship with God will be able to know that, uh-uh, yes, this lady has been preaching the word of God, the undiluted word of God, but this particular thing that she said is not, mm -mm, it's not okay. Is that not how we've seen how some servants of God, they started perfectly, but they ended bad? Haven't we seen what happened to Solomon? So it doesn't mean that because they started well, everything that they say is correct. There are times that they might say some things that are not okay. But if you don't have a relationship with God and you're not studying the word of God yourself, you will not know that those things are not true. Oh, because he had been saying things that were true. He made some prophecies. He said some things that God told him when you started up with him and it was okay. So it means that as he has always been true, he has always preached on the little word of God, even till now he is. Meanwhile, he had disconnected from the spirit of God a long time ago. I always use the fan scenario because it's the easiest to understand that it is possible for people to have disconnected from God and they will still function in some level of anointing before they totally lose it all. You see the fan, when the fan is on, the, 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 the little things, whatever, the hands or the wings, they will be spinning, right? It would spin so fast because current is going through, right? And then when you automatically switch off the fan, does it automatically stop? No, it doesn't. The wings will still spin for a while. When that wind is spinning, it has the tendency of current is still going through it, but it had already been switched off. It had already disconnected. That's how some servants of God are today. Servants of God in quotes. That's how some are today. They started very well. They were connected to the source. They have been connected. At some point, they disconnected. But because that fan, those wings are still spinning, they think that they are still connected to God up until boom, it stops. And then we're wondering, what happened? They, they didn't disconnect that time. The fan was not switched off that time. They had already disconnected from the current when it was switched off, but there was still some degree, there was still some little energy, there was still some little current that was still in the fan, that was keeping the fan's wings to still be spinning, even though it was disconnected already. Is that not why you need to study the word of God by yourself? Is that not why you need to have a relationship with God yourself? So that you can be able to know, you can be able to discern that this thing that this person is saying, that this thing that this person is doing is not okay. But hey, because we don't want to study the word of God, because we don't want to have a relationship with God, that's why we're missing out. That's why we're missing out. Do you know what is happening to us? Those of us who don't want to study the word of God and we're being tossed to and fro by every wind of doctrine. This is exactly how it works. Eh? Let, let, me, let me put the scenario in a way that it will come through to you seriously. So you understand how serious this thing is. When you don't want to study the word of God, you want your papa or your mama or some other person to study the word of God for you and then give it to you. This is what you're doing. Like in the sense of it. Let me put it in a... In a in a scenario that you can easily understand. It's like you get married to somebody and then you tell maybe your best friend or your sister or your brother or someone, you tell them, right, to go and have intercourse with your husband or your wife and come and tell you how it is. That's what we're doing. Those of us who claim that we've accepted Jesus Christ as our personal Lord and Savior, so right now, we're in a relationship with God. We don't want to have koinonia with God. We don't want to have that intercourse with God ourselves. We are waiting for Papa and Mama to go and study the word of God and then come and give us what God is saying. Come and give us the experience. Do you understand? Does that even make sense to you? Does that even sound normal that you send some other person 
to go and have intercourse with your spouse and then come and tell you how it feels. Would you be able to do that? But do we know that's exactly what we're doing when it comes to Jesus Christ, our relationship with Christ, and not wanting to have a relationship with him as we should? Not wanting to study the word of God as we should? That's exactly what we're doing. You see how crazy it is? You see how unreasonable it is when it's put like that? And that's exactly what we're doing. Some of us, this is exactly how we do it. We are with Christ. We say we've had a relationship with God. And every single time is the devil, the devil did this. You as an individual, would you be okay that you are in a relationship with somebody and the person is always talking about some other person, a person that they left for you. And then they've come now, they're in a relationship with you. And every point in time, they're talking about that person that they just left. Does it make sense? But that's what most of us are doing. We're in a relationship with God. But either, instead of learning what God likes and what he doesn't like, so that we can dread and avoid like a plague, the things that he doesn't like, and do the things that he likes, we are rather talking about the devil, the devil, the every time in the presence of God, we are the devil, child of God. <laughs> it is time for us to re, re, re strategize. We have been doing this style and this technique over and over and over, waiting for people to eat the food, swallow it, and then come and regurgitate it probably and give it to us to eat. It's not like that though. We have to get to a place where we have a personal relationship with God ourselves. Where we go into the scripture and search the scriptures and know what the word of God is saying. That's how you'll be able to stand. It is the promises of God to you in the word of God. This is God's love letter to you. Hey, I don't know about you. But when I was younger, when they give you love letter, hey, you will guard it jealously. And then you begin to read that letter every day. It's just so cool and so good. Then God has given his own love letter, the Bible. You carry and put it on one side. Like, I used to guard it jealously. I don't know about you how you are doing, you know. You have one love letter that, that they have written. The person has poured out their hearts in that letter and sent to you. Hey, when you read it, that's how you are feeling happy. That's how it's supposed to be with the word of God. The word of God is God's love letter to his children, to his beloved. Yeah, his bride. And that's why you go to the word of God every single day. You read it. It looks like there is a new revelation. There is a new way that you experience. Like, it's just like there is just some new ginger. There's just some new, hi, some new spice in the whole thing. When you understand that that is God's love letter to you, you will read it with another level of enthusiasm, anticipation, expectation. And that's how God will do wonders for you. Would you study the word of God? It is important. It is important. Because when you see the things that are going on in the world, you will weep as this servant of God here was weeping. You'll be able to go on your knees. You'll be able to be burdened enough to pray. You'll be able to be burdened enough to speak the word of God unapologetically, unashamedly. Because the word of God has the power unto salvation. You will not be bothered about what people think. You know what the word of God is saying. And you know how powerful the word of God is. Welcome, Mr. Ngecha. He says you too. No, we have to be serious. So this one is a serious matter. There's no jokes about this one. If we don't do things right, we will not get the right results. We will not get the right results. And we will remain stagnant. It's not a good thing. And he says, Behold, the avilient one shall cry without. The ambassadors of peace shall weep bitterly. The highway lies waste. The wayfaring men... Man sees it. He had broken the covenant. He had despised the cities. He regarded no man. Hmm. That's how these people are. Some of them have no regard for God at all. 
so they would so talk down the word of god they will so talk you down if you are not rooted in the word of god if you don't have a relationship with god i tell you the truth you fall you break you break under their insult. You break under their, I don't know. They, they can so, <clears throat> there are some people that can so talk you down. You look at yourself and wonder whether it is a good thing to be a child of God or not. But I tell you the truth. It's because they desire what you have. They can't get it. You know why they can't get it? They don't know that is the spirit of God that is living through you, that is helping you to live the life. You're not doing it by your power. We don't try by power. It no work. It was until we had that encounter with God. We had that encounter with Jesus Christ. And then we were able to now live the life of Christ. And people are looking at us and wondering. They are desiring, but they don't want to make the sacrifices. They don't want to make the sacrifices that allow for you to be able to live this kind of life. They envy you. They envy you. Don't mind those things they are doing there. It's out of envy. May God help us in Jesus' name. And it says, The earth mourneth and languisheth. Lebanon is ashamed and hewn down. Sharon is like a wilderness. And Bashan and Camel shake off their fruits. Child of God, when you're living in sin, there's danger. You get to lose a lot. The enemy can do any how he wants with you. Your life will just be a waste. Total waste. We all need an encounter with God. We need that relationship with God. We need the word of God. To be able to show us the way. To be able to guide us. To be able to lead us. We need the word of God. And it says. He shall come. Now will I rise. Say the Lord. Now will I be exalted. Now will I lift up myself. God is God by himself. Oh. Don't deceive yourself. Don't, some people. No, I will not serve God. You're not serving God. Doesn't make God less God. Oh. Neither is your serving God. Making God more God. You're serving God is for your good. You're not serving God. It's for your destruction. <laughs> because sometimes the way we serve God, we serve God like we're doing God a favor. We're serving him. Our serving him is doing him a favor. It's not. Though. Not serving God is doing yourself a disservice. It's not God. God is God all by himself. With or without you, God is God. But he desires that you get saved. He desires that you have a relationship with him. But it's up to you. He's not going to force you. You would have to make the choice. God does not want to control people. He gives you the options and the opportunities and tells you the best option and you have to make the choice even the enemy cannot force you you still make the choice all he can do is project thoughts into your head and it's up to you to decide which thoughts you're going to dwell on and which thoughts you're eventually going to leave out it is your choice so you hear this thing we normally say these excuses we give is the work of the devil devil know they involved village people village people are not involved you make choices and you're continuously making choices and those choices are some of the things that have happened to you that you are at the stage where you are right now all the enemy did because God has made it so. Even him, God is not going to function here without you allowing him. Spirits are spirit. They function in the spirit realm. To function on earth, you need a body. And it's you who would give God an opportunity to function through you. Or you give the devil an opportunity to function through you. It is you. Who has that power to allow God to function or allow the devil to function?
because they all the way god created it and made it they need a body to function on earth as long as they are spirits they cannot function here so who are you giving the authority to function in your life the devil or god May God give us an understanding in Jesus' name. And it says, um, well, on verse 11, You shall conceive chaff, you shall bring forth stubble, your breath as fire shall devour you. <clears throat> and the people shall be as the burnings of lime, as thorns cut up, shall they be burned in the fire hmm. judgment is coming jesus christ came the first time as the lamb of god to take away the sins of the world so he came as love the next time is coming is coming as a just george to take those people who have accepted the finished work that he did on the cross previously so he's not coming this time as love -o. He has made his love available. You have the time right now before his second coming to make the choice to accept that love that he has given to you freely when you didn't even deserve it. So when it's coming, it's coming as a just George. So don't sit down and say, oh, when Christ comes, then that time he would now just, you would have made your choice. And that will be an everlasting choice. It will be a permanent choice at that time. When Jesus comes again, that choice that you've made, you know, <laughs> sometimes people say, no, I didn't choose anything. You're not choosing Jesus. It's automatic choosing the devil. You get? There's no middle ground. That you've not accepted Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior. You've automatically chosen the devil. There's no middle ground that you say, oh, me, I didn't choose Jesus and I didn't choose the devil. <laughs> Get it clearly, you. That's how it is. You're not choosing Jesus Christ as an automatically choice of the enemy. That's where you are. Okay. It says, yea, ye that are far off, what I have done, and ye that are near, acknowledge my might. Oh, God is all-powerful. God is all powerful whether you believe it or not god is omnipotent he's omniscience he's omnipresent whether you believe it or not he is he came and died on the cross for your sakes and mine so that we can be saved and we can be reconciled back to god whether you believe it or not it is true there are lots of things that some people don't believe but those things are real and you cannot blame them some people will not believe until they see it but unfortunately, some things cannot be seen because an encounter with God cannot be seen. It can only be experienced. It can only be experienced. You cannot see it. You can experience it and then they start seeing the fruits. That's why the Bible says by their fruits you shall know them. It's based on what you've taken. It's based on the nutrients that you've taken. It's based on, on, on the vine you're connected to. Then they'll know what kind of fruit you carry. When the fruits start manifesting. And it doesn't take long though. After you have an encounter with God. Oh my God. There are just some things that are going to fall off your system. I can assure you. I can promise you that. I've been there. So I know what I'm talking about. There are some that you might struggle with a little bit. Some for a while. Some you might even struggle with forever. You remember the apostle saying. Lord. Take away this stone. In my, he said, mm -mm, my grace is sufficient for you. See this one, so it will remain for you. You are saved, though. You are saved. But this particular one, it will keep you humble. It will be here. <laughs> it is well with the righteous. It says, the sinners in Zion are afraid. Fearfulness had surprised the hypocrites. Who amongst us shall dwell with the devouring fire who amongst us shall dwell with everlasting burnings he that walketh righteously and speaketh uprightly he that despiseth the gain of oppressions that shaketh his hands from holding of bribes 
that stopped his ears from hearing of blood and shut his eyes from seeing evil. This kind of person is only the one that has accepted Jesus Christ. This kind of person. They ask who is able to, to, to escape the fire, the everlasting burning and all that. And they were giving us clearly who that person is. It's a person who walks righteously. It's a person who speaks the right thing at the right time. It's a person who hates oppression. Hates anything that has to do with oppression. It's a person who does not take bribe. It's a person who does not listen to evil works, to evil things. They close their eyes from seeing evil. They are careful. They are cautious. Are you that person? If you're not, the Spirit of God can help you. You need an encounter with Him to be able to do that. Because these things, you can't do them on your own accord. With the sin nature on the inside of you, you cannot. You need the nature of Christ by accepting Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior. And he goes on to say, He shall dwell on high. His place of defense shall be the munitions of rocks. Bread shall be given him. His waters shall be sure. Oh, when you have an encounter with God, when you have a relationship with God, there are lots and lots of things that people struggle for that you get. Are we saying that you will not have challenges? Of course not. The Bible says that offenses must come. So as long as you're on planet Earth, oh yes, you have issues. But we'll be coming from a victorious side. We'll be coming from the angle of victory. We'll be fighting these battles with a victor's mindset because Christ already won the battle for us 2,000 plus years ago. That's our advantage. That we're fighting from a victor's angle. We're victorious already. We're just fighting to bring out the manifestation of what Christ had already done 2,000 plus years ago. It says, Thine eyes shall see the king in his beauty. They shall behold the land that is very, very far off. When Christ comes. Yes. Thine heart shall meditate terror. Where is the scribe? Where is the receiver? Where is they? Where is he that counted the towers? Thou shalt not see a fierce people, a people of a deeper speech than thou canst perceive, of a stammering tongue that thou canst not understand. Look upon Zion, the city of our solemnities. Thine eyes shall see Jerusalem, a quiet habitation, a tabernacle that shall not be taken down, not one of the stakers thereof, not one of the stakes thereof shall ever be removed, neither shall any of the cords thereof be broken, because it's God that is keeping Zion. Nothing, nobody can do nada to Zion. Nothing. Because God is the one that is taking care of you. Because God is the one that is leading you and guiding you. Because God is the one who gave you the mission and the vision. He's backing you up full time. You cannot be removed. You cannot be dealt with anyhow. No. It's not possible. But when God knows sends you, you're on your own. And anything can happen to you. Are you a child of God? Yes, so. There are children of God that are in a place where God didn't send them. And they are having it hot. When God knows send you, you're on your own. And the enemy can do anyhow with you. Yes, yeah, so. That's the truth. You better believe it. And get things right. And make things right with God. And ask him where he wants you to be. And ask him to show you the place. So you don't begin to get into troubles that you should not have gotten into. But there... The glorious Lord will be unto us a place of broad rivers and streams wherein shall go no, no gully with oars, neither shall gallant ships pass thereby. 
this is God giving you the promises of things that he will do for you when you're in right standing with him. And of course, we know that the opposite is what will happen to you when you're not in right standing with him. You can be destroyed. When you're with God, even in the storm, nothing can happen. In the storm, even in the storm, you can trust the sleeping Jesus. But Jesus has told us that he, will, he never sleeps nor slumber. He's always watching us. But even when he was in human form and sleeping inside the boat, the storm could not destroy them. So even then you could trust the sleeping Jesus. What more of now, the one who has defeated death and is sitting at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty, making intercession for you and I. You think it's now he will fail? He was on earth. With the human form and human flesh, he didn't fail. You think it's now that his name is above every other name that he will fail? Ha, you got to be kidding me. It's not possible. And he says, For the Lord our God, for the Lord our George, the Lord is our lawgiver, the Lord is our king. He will save us. God will save you. As long as you're in right standing with him, he will save you. As long as you're doing his will, he will save you. It's a promise he has made and God doesn't make promises that he doesn't keep. He never makes empty promises. All his promises are yea and amen. When he speaks a word, it comes to pass because it goes out and accomplishes the purpose for which it is sent. His word never fails. It never fails. Never. And it says, Thy tacklings are loosed. They could not well strengthen their mast. They could not spread the sail. Then is the prey of a great spoil divided. The lame take the prey. And the inhabitant shall not say, I am sick. The people that dwell therein shall be forgiven their iniquity. All God wants, it's a broken heart and a contrite spirit. You come to him and say, Daddy, I'm sorry. And of course, he will forgive you. But see, should we keep sinning because grace may abound? Because the tendency is that some people, because they know that there's a possibility you can fall in sin. Can you fall in sin as a Christian? Yes, it's possible. We don't want to, but there is a possibility. So yes, you can. But can a Christian live in sin? No. Child of God, you'll be done backslide already. If you had once given your life to Christ, and then you start living in sin, child of God, you are a backslider. You're not a Christian. Christians cannot live in sin. Please hear me very well. Don't go and misquote me somewhere. A Christian can fall in sin, but a Christian cannot live in sin. You cannot. It's not possible. You cannot live in sin. When you're continuously doing that thing that you know that is not right in the sight of God, and you're doing it continuously, you have backslid it. No, we will not pamper these things. Because sometimes when we pamper it, people continuously live in sin and they are convincing and consoling themselves that they are Christians. You are not a Christian. You have backslidden. You were once a Christian. It says, don't preach the gospel and become a castaway. Why would you become a castaway? Because you have left the faith. Because you have left the faith. Are we disputing the part where you were born again? No. You were born again at some point. But right now, living in sin, you ain't born again. Don't deceive yourself. And it's because some people are living in this deception that the, the power of God cannot be made manifest through them. That some things that were desiring and were calling on God for cannot be made manifest in our lives. Because God is not even there. I don't know who that person is today, but God is calling you back to himself. You just need to come back to him and repent. 
come with a repent and a broken and a contrite spirit. God will not despise. That's just what he wants from you. But you have to come to a realization like the prodigal son. He had to realize and then come back by himself. God is not going to force you. He cannot force you. He has made it like that. He cannot force you. You have to come to the realization. The way the devil can so use you, you will so lose your identity that see this prodigal son, he was thinking, he had so lost his identity and his self-esteem so much so that he was coming. He had forgotten that he was a biological child to the father. He was coming with the idea of coming, of becoming a servant. He had so lost his identity and his self-esteem that he was coming to his father's house. After he had made a mistake, after he had done all the craziness, he was coming back and desiring to just be only a servant. Child of God, when you come back to God, hmm, with a broken spirit and a contrite heart, a contrite spirit and a broken heart, you come back to God. You are restored fully. God doesn't do partial restoration. He does total and complete restoration. So child of God, I don't know where you are right now. Are you still in the faith? If you are, kudos, bravo. May the good Lord release some more grace and some more grace upon your life so that you're going to stand till the end. Have you backslid it? Child of God, all hope is not lost. Come back. Come back. With a broken, come to the, you come to the realization. You've realized that you've been disconnected a long time ago. Just come with the repentant heart. And let God remold you again. So child of God, this is where we're wrapping up for today. On a chapter a day. I am trusting and hoping that you have learned something here today or God has ministered to you in a special way. You know, there's this thing why we sit in a church, in a church building, like there can be a thousand people and everybody comes out of service and you ask them what they learned and everybody is going to give you what the Holy Spirit ministered to them personally. You see, that's why sometimes it's important for you to be at service. It's not good for you to stay away because somebody will only give you the part of what they were ministered to. That was meeting their needs, not yours. But if you were there, God will use that same message and minister to you in a kind of way. I've told us that there are times where I read John 3.16 and God is teaching me sacrifice. There are times where I read it, God is teaching me giving. There are times where I read it, God is teaching me love. It's John 3, 16. And that's how he ministers to people individually. Because somebody is coming to church today and what they need is to understand love. They need to understand the agape kind of love, the God kind of love, the unconditional kind of love. So when they are teaching John 3, 16, all that is ministering to that person's heart is love. And there is someone who needs to learn sacrifice. There's someone who needs to learn giving. And all that that scripture is doing to them as at that time even though we're in the same service it's ministering sacrifice so being at that service to yourself is of the essence because god has what he wants to minister to you so you see that's how it works people Thank you, thank you, thank you all for being here today. I always get to say I love you so very much. But God loves you way, way more. Get to like, share, and subscribe. Don't forget to hit the notification bell so you get all our updates each time we upload a new video or we get to go live. It has been your favorite girl, Princess Clayton, Queen of Hearts and Laughter. <laughs> On the chapter in there, aka Akkad. And uh, it's your Bible program. Yeah, we create an audio Bible and then we study the Word of God together. I'm sure you had a great time today. I wish you a splendidly blessed week ahead and enjoy the rest of your Sunday. So today we're going to be praying that God should help us to come to the realization and come back to him for those who are lost. And for those who are still standing, that God should release his grace upon us to keep standing till the end. 
Father, we come before your throne of grace this day, O Lord. Father, we call upon you, O God. Let them be an encounter for your children, O God. Those who had missed it, those who are backslid, those who have never ever had the encounter before. Lord, let them have an encounter that will transform their lives forever. Lord, I pray, O God, for the ones who had fallen, Lord, that they will come back to a realization and they will come to you with a broken spirit and a contrite heart, O God, to come and receive, O God, that which will transform their lives forever. And for those who are still standing, O God, for your children who have who have been saved and are still standing lord i pray that you release grace upon their lives you release power and strength upon their lives oh god that they'll be able to continuously live the christian life unapologetically and unashamedly oh god and all the rewards that are ascribed to living the righteous life oh god will be theirs in the mighty name of jesus lord bless your people both now and forever for in jesus name we pray and all the saints shall say, Jainamas, Amen. So by the grace of God, tomorrow, if God, if Christ tarries to come, we'll be here again, 9.30 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. And we'll be studying Isaiah chapter 34, by the grace of God. Finally, we got to the half of the book of Isaiah. Isaiah has 66 chapters, so we've gotten to the half of it today. This is how far God is bringing us. Who would have thought when we started in 2021 that will be this far, this season, this time. It has been awesome so far. And we know for a surety that we're going to finish in 2024. So we still have a couple of months to go to get a chapter a day done. I don't know what else God is going to give us to do after a chapter a day. But let's just be optimistic and look forward to whatever God has in store for us. We are grateful, totally and completely grateful for every single person who comes here, participates either in commenting, in liking, in sharing, you know, we are forever grateful. We don't take it for granted. We don't take it for granted. And so we're hoping that you can listen to the audio Bible and get to grow your faith. The word of God says faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So we are glad and honored. That you can listen to the audio Bible created by your girl. I am so, so excited and so, so elated. Considering the fact that we can't do without the word of God in these last days. Considering the fact that the word of God should be part and parcel of our lives. I am honored, totally and completely honored to actually be one who is, um, should I say, championing this end time call to study the word. I am really, really honored. I feel so blessed to have been chosen by god to do this and so please make god proud by studying the word of god it's made available to you in all kinds of ways in too many ways that you would not have any excuse as to why you are not studying the word of god so that it changes you you get let's thank god for another amazing session and sign out of here today we have our audio Bible on TikTok, Facebook, YouTube, Instagram, LinkedIn, and all other social media platforms we are available on. And the ones that are yet to come. Because we have to take this gospel to the ends of the earth. We don't, we don't joke with any platform that we have. We put the, the gospel on there. Because the world is not joking about the things that they want to propagate. They are not joking about the message they want to send out. So we too aren't joking about the message we want to send out. We want to Christianize every place. Yes. I am not sorry about it. I am unapologetic about it. So I'll use every means possible to Christianize everything around me and everybody around me. I'm not sorry. Because the people that are doing whatever they're doing, whatever they want to do in the world, they are not sorry. So I'm not sorry either. Say, no, why are you wanting to Christianize? No, why are you wanting to demonize? Why are you wanting to whatever lies? That's me, I'm a Christian, so I should be wanting to Christianize. What do you expect? You expect me to be somebody I'm not? No. So if you have your agenda, I have my own agenda too. And we all should be doing our agenda quietly. Me, I'm not fighting you. Be doing your own, let me be doing my own quietly. Anyways, let's go. Father, we thank you for another amazing edition that you've given us today. We are grateful, oh God, that you are all through it all. 
that you came through for us, O oh God. You backed us back to your word with signs and wonders. We're forever grateful. Don't take it for granted. Lord, we pray for those who are just waking up. Lord, we pray that you're going to bless the entire rest of their day. For those who are halfway their day, you're going to bless the remaining part. And for those of us who are about to go to bed, Lord, pray that you're going to grant us sound sleep and sweet dreams, O oh God. Father, that you're also going to give us visions and dreams, just like you promised in your word. Father, we say thank you. We truly appreciate it from the depths of our hearts. Lord, you've been faithful. Let this word be engrafted on the flesh tables of our hearts so that we're going to be able to go thereby. Thank you, Abba Father. Thank you, King of Glory, because you're a prayer answering God. Cause us to believe in the Christ's word of man. Some people might never ever read the physical Bible. Not the online Bible, but our lives could be the walking Bible that they'll read. Thank you, Lord, for doing this for us. Now and always. For in Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen, and amen. Until tomorrow. Ciao, ciao. Mm. Je vous aime, je vous aime. Plus, plus fort que moi. Bisous, bisous. A bientôt. Mwah. Oh, Mr. Chow is just got in. Thank you, thank you, thank you for coming. God bless you, God bless you, God bless you. I'm sure you're going to watch a replay. <laughs> Happy Sunday and have a splendidly blessed new week ahead of you in Jesus' name. May the good Lord bless you and give you all that it takes to be able to go and conquer your world in Jesus' name. Amen, amen, and amen. Amen.